As a prefix here, I just want to let you know that I was not paid to do this review on this product and I paid for this myself online from the website I will post in the link and I did an unboxing here to show you uh, what came in the mail and uh, the quality of the product so the connectors used uh, to mate to the Acura uh, MDX and the IDS controller and all the packaging as well to keep it and prevent it from damaging and so uh, let's go ahead and get started I ordered this in the mail and this is the IDS controller from Idle Stopper and it's going to be pretty simple just as in the last video I removed this panel here by pulling from the bottom so I'll do it again pull from here pop it out pull from the top too just to help with prying this and then once you get your fingers behind here you can then pop out these uh, clips and they snap back in they're pretty darn tight you can use the tool provided or you can use your fingers if you don't want to scratch it if you don't want to scratch it prying here there's a couple of clips I'll point to in the last video okay so I'll unclip the right side temperature and the left side temperature. Sometimes it takes a little bit more of uh, two fingers, two hands to do it. There, and now again, it's off. You can see where you're prying from. If you're prying from here, once it comes off, you kind of have more leverage than these tend to then come loose by pulling from even here and under portion versus trying to pry from the top. Now, again, this portion down here has to be pried carefully. Uh, we're really just trying to access this so we may be able to get away with not pulling so hard. Now, when you pull up here, it will make a noise, a popping noise as it kind of releases. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, here we can then remove the idle stopper button by pinching the tab right here. Pinching this and it will pull out. Now we just need to insert the idle stopper. I'd say this is the female side this is the male so we take the male side uh, male side here on the harness plug it into the adapter and now we have our jumper harness that fits into our IDS dynamic mode so now you can tuck this harness back behind behind the hole and tuck it here there's a lot of space in there, so we can tuck it back in there and then push this back into place. Before I press it down, just wanted to show if we can see and zoom in here what it kind of looks like. Now that I have it in, you can see the wires, but they aren't pinched at all. They're free in there. Uh, it's going off to the left-hand side and curling around to the normal harness. So that's the way I decided to do it. So that way it's not down below. Uh, you can do it either way, wherever there's room, but uh, I prefer this method since it's straight back, there'll be no pressure or pulling uh, and it probably won't be rattling around. So the other thing I could do is also use some tie straps. So if you feel like you're getting a rattle, just take some tie straps and make it a little bit tighter. So we'll see how this goes. All right, so now I need to install this portion. I've kind of set it back in place. Uh, I'm kind of looking on the side here, making sure that I have placed the, um, here we go, placed the, the um, hardware in the right place so that way it will go in very easily. And I'm just going to start pressing down with the palm of my hand to snap it back in place and forward. And it sounds like it's cracking, but it's not. It's just popping back into place and it's very solid again and there's no no nothing wrong here with the edges so just be aware there is a crackling sound while doing it but just use firm flat pressure 
to make sure that it snaps back into place and that you have it in the right place. Don't force it down if it doesn't want to go in. And so now all I have to do is put back this middle one. Pretty simple. All right, so I have the last connector snapping it in. Now I get to line it up. Again, same thing. I'm looking to snap this all back in place in the right area. So I want to make sure I get all of these semi lined up in their places, in their homes, and then just push straight forward with as much flat pressure as you can. And that's pretty much it. It's back in place. There's no, no uh, looseness to this, okay? So that's pretty much it. Now we can start the car. So let's go ahead and do it. I'll close the door. And And now it has gone to the individual mode without having to press the button. And my individual settings for mine is without the auto stop start. So turn the radio off. I also have a B16 maintenance due, so I will be doing a video on the rear transfer uh, fluid uh, for the rear differential. And uh, so that's pretty much it for this one is wrapping it up. Uh, it's a great product. Obviously, it does exactly what it's meant to do. It uh, uh, allows you to start your car, automatically go into individual mode. So all your settings, such as the uh, uh, the trim lighting here, so whatever you set there will will be there. Your auto stop start settings, steering control if you have it, and um, others in the individual settings. So pretty cool product. Uh, I believe I bought it for ninety nine dollars. Uh, check out Idle Stopper and see how you like it. For the individual settings, you can do it by holding down the individual button and the individual settings come up. And then you can use the touchpad to decide what you want to do. So engine, sports mode, steering mode, suspension, lighting, gauge, and normal. And I have it idle stop disabled, but you can change any one of these settings. Uh, with this idle stopper, it should save it. Um, they do have in the documentation showing that if you do want it in sport mode, which I assume will be uh, when this mode here is S, which is your... Here we have the sport setting, so you get to change it to normal or comfort or sport. So then just hit the arrow back button on your touchpad, and then you can go to steering, and the steering, again, comfort, normal, or sport hit the back button, and then uh, for suspension, I believe normal MDXs do not have any kind of electrical ride, um, so it's not really gonna change anything. Uh, the idle stop, again, you can able, enable it or disable it. The gauges, normal gauges, you can uh, do comfort, normal, or sport gauges on here to change the look and feel of your, uh, your dash on this side and lighting the lighting you get to change the colors so the accent themes whether you have white blue red and so on you get to choose that the back button so now I'm out of individual settings so again this product is a good product because Acura let us down with the uh, individual drive setting not being able to be uh, saved so you can set up your key to unlock your car and have driver 1 and driver 2 uh, seat settings uh, but they don't allow you to do individual settings saved and this product uh, the IDS drive mode is better than just the idle stopper uh, portion which is I believe uh, less expensive than this one and uh, it can do the same for you. So if you just want auto stop start off, uh, you can buy that product. But if you want to get more value, I would say this IDS controller is a better value because it does save those settings. So if you're um, one of those people who really does like the lighting and the fill of the steering wheel and transmission engine uh, settings change to a sport setting, uh, you get to do that with the individual mode and have that automatically uh, be pressed when you start your car without you having to physically press it. So I find value in that. I set up a uh, uh, a dash cam 
and I'm trying to get my phone to trigger the dash cam, I'm trying to put the individual setting and get all that set up, this will eliminate that procedure for me. I can just start the car and not have any issues at all with it going to individual mode, and I'm very happy with this product.